get started. Uh, so it is 6.34 on Monday, July 8th. I'm calling the Board of Select Meeting to order. Um, uh, standard few announcements. Uh, first, this meeting is being taped by 1623 uh, Studios um, for a future broadcast. The meeting is also being um, recorded by the uh, Board of Selectmen Secretary, Sonia Nathan, uh, for accuracy in minutes. If anybody else is at recording the meeting, we are asked to notify us at this time. And then uh, <clears throat> lastly, if everybody would take a moment and <clears throat> put their cell phones on silent, um, we'd appreciate it. Hello, others. <laughs> How's this working? Um, so we're going to um, actually take a moment to uh, recognize um, Andy Harris, who um, passed away on Friday. So Andy Harris is uh, a, a long time volunteer of the board. But pretty much up until the, the day that he died, he was involved with uh, volunteer positions for the town. He was um, a, a great advocate and, and cared very much for the culture of the town and for the safety and the well-being of its residents. So we're going to take a moment and have a moment of silence for Andy Harris. Okay, uh, first order of business is uh, item zero on the agenda, which is if there's any, anybody who has a comment that they want to make on some topic which is not on the agenda, um, now, now we'll give you a couple minutes to do so. Mr. Kehoe, sir, if you would be willing to step to the podium and grab a microphone. <laughs> I'm pretty new at this. Yeah. Uh, Tom Kehoe, 20 Lincoln Street. I'm here with Sue Thorne as the co-chairs of the 375th Anniversary Committee. And we just wanted to come and say, first of all, we do plan on coming and spending a little more time with you two weeks from tonight to report where we are. Um, this week we're having our 10th meeting of the group, so we're moving right along. But uh, as we are an appointed, appointed committee by the Board of Selectmen, it is important for us to let you know things before we let everything everybody else know. Tomorrow night at Music at Masconomo Park, the uh, community center is going to be doing hot dogs and hamburgers, and the 375th committee is going to be doing Richie's slush. So come on down for supper. <laughs> but the other thing we're going to be doing is releasing our preliminary schedule of events for 2020, starting in January all the way through December. So I wanted just to make sure we wanted to come tonight just to give you a copy of this. Uh, information sheet and uh, just to let you know where we are and we'll talk to you in two weeks. <clears throat> You're a teacher, you can pass these out. You're a retired teacher, you can, you can still pass them out. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tom. <laughs> something that's not on the agenda? Yes, is there any possibility of getting the air conditioner on? <laughs> we, we can turn the air conditioner back on. Okay, that would be great. You won't hear sitting in that seat. Oh, oh, you want to try the window? Open the window. Yeah, maybe the window. Because it is kind of it's nice though. It's refreshing. I think you're going to feel it too. Okay. So the first actual item on the agenda is an interview for Board of Health Camp candidate Peter Caloroso. Um, Peter, uh, if you could come forward. Um, 
introduce yourself. Uh, you'll have to hold the microphone up. The microphone will uh, actually should work with the speakers, and it's also uh, to allow the television cameras to record you. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about yourself, your backing, and um, uh, your uh, uh, relevant experience for the Board of Health. Uh, my name is Peter Colarusso. I'm at Ford Rockland Heights Road. I uh, moved in December 18th of 2018. Really good time. <laughs> Doesn't say anything about my planning ability. <laughs> it was up to the movers. Um, I graduated from Tufts University with a dual degree in chemistry, biology. I went to work for W.R. Grace in their construction products research and development laboratory in Cambridge. Ended up managing the laboratory. In that role, uh, I was responsible for not only developing products, but taking those products to all the various testing agencies, UL, FM, uh, writing uh, specifications, bringing those specifications to the various code bodies. And we would go to Dade County because they were the most rigorous. And usually, if Dade County approved them, then snowball through the rest of the county, uh, through the rest of the country. Um, we worked with contractors on how to meet the codes and why the codes are important. And it's not just to aggravate the building owner, it's for the safety. Um, after that I went to uh, Sloan uh, and took strategic development and took four companies uh, that were underperforming and turned them around for sale. One was a disaster. I just absolutely just dropped the ball on that one. Uh, they had a product that nobody wanted that was expensive to use, <laughs> and they couldn't understand why they couldn't sell it, and I couldn't help them. Uh, then after that, I, uh, I retired. The two other uh, positions, one was in a uh, construction industry, one was uh, making high glass lenses, polarized high glass lenses. So I believe I have a technical background. Um, I've written the codes. I've, done, I've been on both sides of the table on how to cheat on the codes and how to, um, sorry, on how to comply as easily as possible to the codes and, and how to uphold them. And my philosophy is the codes are there for, to protect the building owner. And they need to understand that. They're not there to make their lives miserable. They were there to protect the community and the building owner. Any questions? Member of the board, questions? You're good with different meeting times and I'm retired, and so I am available 24-7. So In fact, I'm looking for Careful. things to do. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I work yeah. for seven hours so, a week, so nothing from. is brutal. <laughs> He's already on our committee. Yes. Um, it's um, with a number of boards and committees, sometimes um, uh, meetings can be heated and contentious. Um, and it's um, always important to be able to remember it's not about you, but about the board, the bylaws, and what's best for the town. And some people have a hard time doing this. I would presume with your background that that wouldn't be a problem, but you know, it is it is something that needs to be considered. I understand. Uh, I am currently on, uh, let's see, the Board of Directors for the Main Area Chamber of Commerce, for the North Shore Community College, for um, two graduate fraternities at Tufts, and don't think that's contentions. Uh, <laughs> And uh, there was one other one. Um, but my philosophy is I, I, I just we deal with the facts. And the motion has nothing to do with it. I, I may think you're a wonderful person. I really want to help you with the facts and the facts. And keep a motion out of it. Um, I've been yelled at by the best. <laughs> so what's one more? <laughs> and I don't necessarily yell back because that doesn't that doesn't accomplish anything. What, uh, what made you move to Manchester? We had a house uh, on the water in Gloucester, and it was below the 34 feet. 
and it's going to be extremely expensive to comply and make it the way we wanted it. And my son and my grandchildren moved to Pleasant Street, and we were babysitting for them a couple of days a week. So I said, you know what, let's just move, move down the block and to make life easier. And it's a wonderful town. It is a wonderful, I, I, I knew a little of it before I moved here, but I was very pleasantly surprised um, having walked everywhere. I, I got a leased car on February 8th and just put my second gallon of gas in it. Just <laughs> filled the tank for the second time. Just walked everywhere. So it's a wonderful town, and anything I can do to help it, I'm more than willing to. So what do you think is the, the biggest missed opportunity of the town? Uh, missed opportunity? Well, you know, I don't know enough to talk about it, because I don't know what opportunities were available. Um, I, I really feel... Okay. So, <clears throat> one of the um, major things that the Board of Health does is to do um, septic system design inspection permitting. Um, <clears throat> happens a lot in town. The fact that the town is encouraging a hybrid um, of <clears throat> hybrid system management for, for sewer. Some places will be on sewer, but we're also um, expecting a significant number of people to stay on septic and maybe even consider things like community um, septic system where possible. Um, <clears throat> so the Board of Health needs uh, somebody who can uh, keep up with the current and new technology for septic systems. So have you got any problem with um, uh, diving into that? So. Not at all. <laughs> diving in may be a little too much to ask. <laughs> Understanding it? Okay. <laughs> um, well, our, our yeah. products for, at WRF race were concrete and were, I don't want to say water control, because you can't control water. I have utmost respect for any, any water. It's going to get you past the Grand Canyon. You can divert it, you can delay it, but you're not going to stop it from doing what it wants to do, which is, you know, half of the battle with the septic systems is keeping the water contained. And I spent 20 years studying how to do that. Okay. <coughs> Anybody else on the board? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, I take a motion to appoint Mr. Calabrese to the Board of Health. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Welcome, sir. I uh, appreciate you. your volunteer. Thank you. All right. Item number two. <coughs> Uh, item number two, unless anybody objects, we can move down. I think the only ones are going to move down. Down. That one. That's the board committee uh, and the review. Right. Um, item number three, uh, since it's 645, is a public hearing for a new all liquor license for dining restaurant group. Doing business as the morning of 25 Union Street, and I'll take a motion to open the public hearing. So, you got a second? Second. Any discussion? No. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, okay, if you all could introduce yourselves and explain and tell us a little bit about the business. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Ryan Gosta from McDermott Cool D. Miller here on behalf of Dynamic Restaurant Group, LLC. With me is Michael Rossa, who's Post Manager of Record, as well as Majority Shareholder of the company. Uh, this will be a new American-style restaurant at 25 Union Street, replacing the former super fine restaurant that was formerly in the space, which shut down some time ago. Um, so to that end, we're applying for a common victualler and new all-alcohol license for the restaurant. I do have some proposed menus and floor plans I can let you guys take a look at if you don't already have them. This will be a full service restaurant with approximately 45 to 50 seats. 45 to 48 seats. Um, it will be a light remodel of the existing restaurant space. 
kitchen largely remaining the same with the equipment from the former operator. Of course, we'll be rebranding from the former name Superfine to the new name, which will be the Mooring. And other than that, largely operations just remaining the same as a new restaurant. There will be a slight expansion of the former bar on the first floor from 8 seats to 15 seats. Um, and we're seeking a closing hour at 12 a.m., which is in keeping with a few restaurants that aren't in. Uh, as I said, Michael will be the manager of record of the restaurant. He's also the majority owner of the company, along with his two parents. So this is a small family-owned operation, uh, keeping it closely held here. And he has extensive experience in the industry. He's been a manager and a bartender for, I believe, over 10 years. And he's also been the manager of Calis here in town for the past three years. So he's excited to open his own place and looking forward to opening. Okay. Um, what's your um, expected schedule for opening? Uh, target date would be early to mid August. As soon as possible. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, depending on licensing. Okay. <clears throat> Tonight's the hearing for the liquor license. The common Riddlers would be coming after that, I think. Um, okay, immediate questions from the board? Is that, is that an LLC? It is correct, yeah. Is that based in Massachusetts? It is, yes. Paperwork, all yeah. paperwork was all submitted. Yes. Okay. I, I didn't print it all. I, just I do it. have return receipts for a butter's notice. I can submit <coughs> okay. to the executive secretary. Okay. <clears throat> all right. It's a public hearing. Any questions or comments from the public before we uh, uh, move to the next step on this? <coughs> All right. There is, there are one or two um, other town offices that I want to get some information for. So, um, so your scheduled date of early mid August, I think, will be compatible if we do a short extension on this, short, short continuation of this hearing to the next meeting that we have, which is on Monday, July 22nd. Um, <clears throat> and I would like to propose that we do that now. I would just want to get any other questions out of the way for what we have on, in front of us today. And it sounds like all the rest of your stuff yeah. is made. So, um, if there are no objections to the rest of the board, can I get a motion to continue this hearing to um, 22nd. July 22nd? So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, I'll be in touch with you folks um, to schedule up the um, continuation, and hopefully that won't take very long at all. Will that require a second public hearing, or is that a no? That's, this is the this public hearing is not going to be closed. It's being continued. So okay. it's the same public hearing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So item five is our consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have Board of Selectmen minutes from June 10th and June 24th. Um, a donation from the Atwater Kent Foundation, common middler's license for Helen's Bottle Shop, um, LLC. Board reappointments 
for MAPC representative Christine Galicio and for the North Shore Task Force representative also Christine Galicio. Both of those are planning board appointments to those positions. And then um, the last item is um, uh, um, no parking zone at 46 Brook Street. Now we have in the past uh, done these as public hearings. So what the consent agenda item is tonight is to agree to put that on the agenda as a public hearing. Um, and I think we would aim for the 22nd to that. Yeah. I think we, we can do that for the 22nd, right, Greg? Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> I am going to pull the meetings from June 10th because I was out for a week and still have not had time to send in my notes on those. But I have gone over the meetings on June 24th and I'm happy with those. So um, <coughs> does anybody have any other comments or things they want to pull or discuss regarding the um, consent, consent agenda? No. Okay. So, um, with the exception of the Board of Selectmen minutes for June 10th, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Yes, second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, we have Board Committee Handbook Review or Correspondence? And correspondence. Correspondence. Uh, we have a letter from uh, uh, Massachusetts Accounting Offices for um, uh, Elizabeth Duke Martin's MAA designation. Notice of decision from the Planning Board regarding the MERS-D special permit for the um, school building project. Um, a letter from Nancy Hammond regarding the fiscal year 19 senior tax work off program. We had a number of people take advantage of that. We do encourage people who um, want tax relief, they, they can apply for the senior tax um, work off program to um, uh, abate some of their real estate taxes. Uh, <clears throat> An informational letter about some asbestos abatement being done at Landmark School. Uh, yet another fantastic letter from Xfinity. The Xfinity on-demand on application is no longer available. It's a tragedy. Um, and a letter from Senior Care regarding the uh, annual service report to the town and the region. Okay. Uh, any questions about anyone's? Nope. <clears throat> Well, I think maybe it should be noted just for the minutes that Liz, how long is that assessing course? What what kind of process did she have to undergo? No, it's pretty extensive. Right. Um, so a number of uh, number of classes that she had to take and a number of tests that she had to pass. Um, so she is now a certified Massachusetts assessor. Um, so it's, it's it's really a credit to her dedication and willingness to to improve herself. And he's part of that office operation. Right. Uh, so, so uh, an excellent effort on her part, and uh, kudos to her for, for achieving it. Good. Great. <clears throat> All right. Well, Greg, do you want to spend three minutes on the first part of your? Uh, town administrative report, and then we'll get into the public hearing. Um, sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, so first off, there's uh, I, I serve as a member of the, um, the Maya Board, the um, Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association, um, and we we secure our health insurance currently through them. And so because of that, uh, since I serve as a board member and that we purchase our health insurance, there's an annual disclosure form uh, that requires your um, sign up on and so basically acknowledging that there's a potential conflict because I serve on the board and also we purchase health insurance from them. Um, I think that's a pretty manageable conflict. Um, and I think that the benefits uh, of being on the board outweigh potential conflicts because it uh, allows us uh, good information on what mine is doing and um, helps, helps steer the products that serve us well. Well, um, I will observe that um, 
during your tenure here where the town's been um, <clears throat> had very good results from its uh, health insurance um, benefits. So I do think we benefit from that relationship pretty well. So a motion would be in order to formally um, have you like sign off on that disclosure. <coughs> I'll make a motion to have the chairman of the board sign off on the disclosure form in terms of the health insurance trust. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, coming up this Friday, um, you have your um, workshop to look at priorities and, and goals for the, this new fiscal year that has just begun. Um, so we'll be meeting at 7.30 at, at CC1. And <clears throat> typically we try to tackle two sets of agenda items. One is what are the priorities that all of you see um, and try to get consensus on those priority items. And then um, also take a look at how you as a board have been operating and any thoughts on some fine tuning for those operations. Um, so those are the two main topics that we uh, will spend a couple of hours on. Um, obviously, the homework assignment would be for you to be thinking about both those topics. Um, and we'll go through um, a discussion and, and identify what, um, what those priorities are and any fine tuning that you suggest. Uh, I was going to give a quick update. Um, I'm pleased to report that no uh, major incidents to report over the holidays. In the last week, uh, obviously a very busy time on the water at the beach, given the uh, the sudden arrival of very hot uh, summer weather. Um, a little late in coming this year, so I think there's some pent up demand for being at the beach. Um, but things went well. Um, there were a few incidents, but nothing that wasn't uh, good staff couldn't manage. Um, a very full parking lot. So many people uh, uh, with resident stickers were not able to get in because other residents had beat them to it. Um, so we give out about 3,000 resident stickers, and there are about 120 spaces in that, in that parking spot, in that parking lot. So there will be times when uh, even, even residents have to return home. Um, uh, we try to minimize that, but we don't control that either. How do we do on water? Yeah, uh, yeah things were pretty okay. smoothly. We did not have large um, number of boats anchoring off of sand dollars just because of the, uh, the wind direction, I think. Mm. And the threat of thunderstorms, even though they came late on Saturday, mm -hmm. the threat of them kind of kept, uh, kept the boat numbers lower. Um, so there were, there were about 100 boats, um, both at Black Beach, off of Black Beach, and off of, uh, uh, off of in San Diego. Um, so pretty, fairly manageable. Nothing, um, there, there are a few incidents, but nothing, nothing terribly out of the ordinary. Um, so overall, uh, staff did a good job. And, I think it's important to note uh, thank you to the Parks and Rec group and the 4th of July committee. All volunteers that give up their time. They did a great job and from our perspective along the parade group, there were a lot of people. You know, we have 2,000 flags and we ran out about just about halfway to the library wall. Um, so there were, a, there were a lot of people and, and in places that there aren't usually some years, so. That yeah, continues to be a great town yep. event. And yep. uh, Cheryl and the volunteers do a yep. great job. they do a really nice job. And it is all volunteer, <coughs> which is huge on a big holiday <coughs> for families, so. Greg, there was a concern that was raised by um, people who were trying to park at White Beach residents, uh, that there were no spaces available. Was that due to those spaces being taken by resident stickers, or was, was there a follow-up on that in terms of whether people were um, out of town people were parking there since that's residents only? Right. So, so police have been trying to do more uh, patrolling there. Um, I, I don't know how often they got there over, over you know, both July, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh -huh. I do know they were trying to get there more often, but I, I'd have to double check if, with Todd. Uh, to see how often they were able to check that. It is on their list to be checking more often. Okay. I guess there was a, a some sort of incident at Tiki Beach with somebody that may have not had all their faculties with them. And so I'm wondering, is there, have we ever looked at anything uh, to prevent 
vehicles from going up onto the sidewalk or potentially even going down onto the beach when it's populated? Yeah. We'll have to talk to Tom and Cheryl about that. Yeah. Um, I guess there was a situation that caused a lot of concern for people that were actually at, uh, on that yeah. sidewalk. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I know the person that intervened, resident intervened before the police could arrive, and there was concern that this person actually, they didn't know what he was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And one well, of the conclusions was it would be very easy if that person wasn't stopped, if in fact it should to drive right onto the beach. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that we put up barriers or anything like that, but I, someone more trained or experienced than me should probably chime in as to public safety when you get large groups of people. Sure. All right. Um, I guess I stop there for now and we'll go into the public hearing. Okay. <coughs> All right, so um, we are going to move into uh, continuation of uh, public tree removal hearing. So this was a hearing that we started um, two weeks ago regarding some trees on the town common. Um, <clears throat> the hearing was continued after a fair bit of discussion so that we could gather some more information, bring some more people in. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and that's what we're going to do tonight. So, a little bit um, of a refresher on the background of this. Um, this is, uh, there, are, there are essentially two projects that are being managed as one down in the town, town of Common. One is a Veterans Memorial Project, which has been underway for uh, many years, and just in this past year or so, finally finished up its funding and is uh, scheduled to be implemented. Um, and the, the, there is one particular tree which is um, proposed to be removed in order to support that project. Then the other project is um, a modification of the town common to replace its asphalt um, uh, pathways and to uh, upgrade the uh, front of town hall a little bit to make it better for um, Handicap people to get in to, make, to add um, um, a connection between the police uh, office uh, and the police department's doors and the um, front door so you can walk back and forth easily between them um, and to um, update the trees. And as far as updating the trees, there's a proposal to remove some trees and add a whole bunch of others. Down in front, I don't know if folks noticed when they came in, there were a bunch of stakes in the ground describing the new trees that are proposed to go in, um, uh, and also the trees that are being proposed to be removed right now um, have been uh, flagged for the past uh, few weeks. Tonight we have uh, Toby Wolf, uh, who is a landscape designer who has been doing the work for the Town Common Project. Um, he has been working to integrate that with the uh, Veterans uh, Memorial Project as well. Also, I have Sue Brown, the town planner, uh, and I know that there are a number of um, uh, members of different boards and committees uh, in the audience as well. Um, uh, things that are up for discussion. We're going to be discussing, uh, obviously, some of the design of the town common project and the, um, the trees and whether or not uh, the proposed trees should be removed or which of the trees should be removed. Um, uh, that's a, a, a an open topic for, for discussion in this public hearing. Um, uh, the, the Veterans Memorial, relocating the Veterans Memorial to another location is not um, a topic for discussion tonight. Um, uh, that's been something that's been discussed and, and voted on many times, and that is um, not going to be something that I'm going to accept um, discussion or debate on tonight. Um, <clears throat> people who wish to speak. Uh, I'd like them to come up to the podium and take the microphone and um, uh, identify yourself as always. And uh, as always, um, uh, civil conversation. Uh, I will do my dead level best to allow anybody who wants to talk to talk. I do want to conclude this in a reasonably um, tight time frame. 
Uh, with that said, I'm going to ask <coughs> Mr. Wolf to um, give us a presentation on the project for the town con. <coughs> Thank you for the opportunity to talk about the common and the trees. I wasn't at the earlier part of the hearing, uh, but I just want to come in and talk about some of the reasoning that got us to this point. Um, I have a few slides. The first one shows uh, Town Common a while ago, before the old town hall was removed and the new one built. And the reason I wanted to start with this one is it shows, you can see the harbor from, uh, from Central Street on this, and it shows how the, the grading was dead level at that point. Now the rise that's in front of Town Hall now, uh, something that was added when Town Hall was built. Uh, Greg, are you? Yep. Okay, <laughs> uh, this is a, a plan showing uh, Town Common as it is right now. Um, and uh, if we can, it's, and as, as you're all familiar with, it's kind of a patchwork of a, a lot of pavement and some green spaces in between the pavement. Um, um, so, so quite simply, the, the concept is to put green in the middle and, uh, and keep pavement, keep the green space the focus and make the pavement uh, serve the needs of people and vehicles to circulate, um, but not be the center of attention. Um, one of the other things that um, we'd like to do is, right now, as I mentioned, the site was originally flat when the town hall was, was built, the ground in front was built up, and that gives the part of the common kind of a little bit of a sunken appearance because it's flat and then mounds up, and I, we want to even that out so it's more of a steady rise up to the front of the town hall. Uh, go ahead, next slide, please. And this is a general plan showing uh, that intent with the oval in the center and everything arrayed around that. Um, the fountain remains where it was. Uh, so this shows the proposed layout and the proposed trees. Next slide, please. And um, this is an identification of the trees, and we can come back to this as needed. But um, we're planting 11 uh, canopy trees, uh, shade trees, and they are principally native trees, um, some that are native to North America but not New England, and some that are not native uh, to North America. Well, one that's not native to North America at all. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and this shows the locations of all the trees uh, that we're proposing to remove. Uh, the ones that we that are, are that were that haven't come up for, for discussion are the ones that are in red. Uh, those are two Norway maples and the three magnolias that are doing uh, very poorly right in front of town hall. Um, the trees in yellow are the ones that are I think the focus of discussion today. The one on the left is an elm tree, American elm. Um, the one on the right is a linden tree, and uh, we can have some more information on those in the slides that follow. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry, this, this, this plan shows that you can see the small red X's. This shows the proposed trees, and then it shows the location of those two trees. So the small red X on the left is where the elm tree is growing, and the small red X on the right is where the linden is. So you can see we're putting the new trees in approximately the locations where those trees are being removed. Uh, so to look at each of these trees individually, uh, the linden tree is uh, next to the path coming up from, from the street. This is a path that we're rebuilding uh, for safety and also because the roots of the linden heave the path. Uh, and on the basis of that heaving, uh, the, uh, the town tree warden had recommended the removal of this tree um, we, it, the tree is, is generally in good shape, it's an attractive tree. Um, the concerns with leaving it are that we would need to build that path in with a, a deeper base to at least delay the day when that heaves the new path. Um, we are putting in a set of stairs there to make the bottom of the path safer. And so um, that will, both of those, even just replacing the path in kind would involve disturbing those roots that are heaving it and putting in uh, the heavier construction of the stairs will also result in excavation. So no matter what we do, this tree is removing some of its, is losing some of its current roots, and that's always poses something of a risk to the tree, both the health of the tree and the structure of the tree. Um, so my recommendation is that if we keep this tree in place, um, 
it should be monitored just to make sure we, uh, it doesn't, doesn't get away from us. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the elm tree, uh, when, I, when I first visited to look at the trees here, the, the, the elm really stood out because it has uh, twigs really emerging from a large part of the tree. You can see a bunch of them at the, at the base. Uh, those are called water sprouts, and generally they occur when a tree is stressed. Uh, when it's not growing properly at the crown, it looks for other ways to grow, and you get the water sprouts coming from the, uh, uh, from the trunk. Uh, it's, it doesn't mean that the tree is dying, but it does reduce the chances that it's going to have a, a bright future ahead of it. Um, so when we started the project, and again, this is something that the tree warden had weighed in on, the removal of this tree, based on, in part on the assumption that that tree was not in great health, and in part on the goal of having grading be a little bit more even, um, the current grading plan shows the grade being raised by about a foot and a half where the trunk of the tree is. And if we did that without any modification, that would pretty much be a fairly quick death sentence for the tree because its roots would be buried by a foot and a half throughout the root system. Uh, we can modify that plan so that we're burying less of the root system, but that has its costs as well and uncertain benefits. So I have two drawings that describe that. So these, this is a plan on the left that shows the proposed grading with a sort of gradual grading down from the town hall toward the street. The one on the right shows how that grading could be modified to keep the elm tree in place. Um, and essentially we'd be preserving a flat area about 15 feet on either side of the tree. Uh, the tree does have roots that extend beyond that, so we would be necessarily to do any of the proposed work, we would be reducing the tree's root system uh, and potentially further accelerating the decline itself. Um, and from a design point of view, it would leave kind of a divot or a slight level area, although uh, we don't really have a level area otherwise, and then kind of steeper slides, steeper sides to get back up to uh, the proposed grade near town hall. Uh, and I have two sections that show that as well. Next slide. Um, the, slide, the, the image on the top shows the desired grading and the location of the new tree that's proposed near that. Um, the image below that shows the grading that we would do if we were uh, attempting to keep the tree, where the tree is a little bit below uh, the area around it. Uh, so the tree on the top is our proposed tree, the tree on the bottom is the existing elm. Uh, I just have one more slide. And these are the um, these are the tree species that we're proposing um, for those locations. Uh, the one on the left to replace the elm is a willow oak. It's a very large growing oak tree, uh, fine willow-like leaves. It's a native of the eastern seaboard, uh, somewhat south of, uh, of New England, but basically as far north as Long Island. Uh, and the one on the right is a Persian ironwood. Uh, it's a a uh, tough tree, New York City is using it as a street tree, uh, and I thought it would be appropriate here because it, aside from being an attractive tree, it doesn't get quite as large or grow quite as fast, so we can plant that in the location where the wind it is at less risk of eating uh, the back in that location. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, I will take questions or comments from the board. Mm -hmm. Um, how old, do you know how old the, um, the linden and the elm are? Uh, I, I don't know the age of those trees. Do they have a, uh, do they typically have um, a specific expected lifespan? Um, for both of those trees normally would be able to live, um, you know, well over half a century. Uh, American elms, um, have not been living very long uh, since the introduction of Dutch elm disease. Mm -hmm. I believe this is probably a variety that was introduced because it's more resistant to Dutch elm disease, mm -hmm. um, but there are other diseases going around and none of the new varieties is really mm -hmm. perfect. And what, um, the replacement trees that go in, I mean, these are nice big old trees, so what would the size um, of the tree replacement trees be? when they are planted? Or, yes. Uh, at the time of planting, they would be uh, roughly 15 to 20 feet tall. Oh, okay. Oh, that's pretty good. I have a 
question on uh, uh, grading, the two different options for grading. Um, the option where we retain the elm tree and you have to have a steeper grading to the very tail end of that grassy region. But very hard for me, um, looking at a landscape profile, to be able to judge that. Can you give us some comparisons? Like, for example, the, the walkway out here from the, in front of the police station that we're going to be repairing with the, how, how would it compare to that, or give us some other comparisons around here? Uh, it wouldn't be, the slope itself wouldn't be especially steep. Uh, it may be only a little steeper than what currently happens when you go from this front of town hall to that tree. It's a, it's a relatively gentle drop off. I think the reason it would be conspicuous is that the grade around it would be raised up. And so the, the goal is to have a fairly consistent uh, slope down. It would just be a, a kind of a dent in that, in that consistency. Okay, so not a challenge for a walker at all? No. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, you mean you're going up the stairs, the new stairs of the new walk? Well, I was thinking the, 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 the notion where they put a well around the right. elm tree. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Are, there, are, are you addressing that issue of the well? Uh, I was asking about that, is what I was asking. Because there, uh, you, you did talk about a, a well around that tree, essentially, right? Uh, the, 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 the area around the tree would be kept at its current grade, and the area beyond that would be raised up, but it wouldn't be a built well. It would just be a Oh, it wouldn't slope. need to be. Oh. No, the, the, I, I think yeah, that's, that's not the solution to recommend there. What are the issues with building a well around it and retaining the grade of the original post plan? Um, the, the goal in grading around the tree is to keep as much of the ground at its current grade as possible. Um, most trees, I think, the, the rule of thumb that you sometimes hear is that the roots go out as far as the canopy. Generally, the roots go out a lot farther than the canopy. Um, and so the, the, the less disturbance you have within, um, within the first 15 or 20 feet, um, the better. So if you build a well around it, you're absolutely kind of, you need to, to trench to build that so there's a kind of an absolute cutoff. And then generally when that's done, the area inside the well isn't enough to preserve the tree. And sometimes trees do live in that situation, um, but in general I've seen more of them where there's a well around where a tree used to be. Um, so it's not a strategy I really recommend. So I got a question, uh, and this goes back to even your presentations earlier <coughs> in the spring. And just think about the trees and the gradation. And I'm also thinking about some of the broader conversations we've had about a town, especially with the Finance Committee. And just thinking about, you know, at one point this building wasn't here. And in theory, there's a time where this building may not be here, or we may not use this building as town hall for a variety of capital management reasons. And I'm not, there's nothing. <laughs> but I'm, what I'm getting at is, is, is this, you know, the proposing of the cutting of the trees and the gradations cemented to this building as is and the use of the space as we know it today, or did your planning consider a day in the, some, somewhere in the future where there was another purpose, uh, not so much to the town green, because the town green and the common will always be the common, but the usage of the area would be different. The reason why I'm asking that is if we start changing the trees and changing the gradations based on what we know today, is that giving the town flexibility for the future, whenever that future is? Um, if the if the town hall stays here, and if the, under another use or if another building is built uh, that doesn't, it's a hard question to answer because it really depends on whether the new use would affect the, the grading that we're doing. Yeah, and so what I'm getting at is I think the town should have the right to retain that flexibility. And so does your plan allow for flexibility or is your plan for the trees and the gradations wired to what we know today? So I'm just trying to find out is your plan, how flexible is your design or intended to be is your design? Because um, the trees, once they're gone, they're gone. <laughs> so that's inflexible. But I'm curious about the intent of your design. Um, the, that flexibility, I, I, 
I have to admit, was never part of the intent of the design. Uh, I don't think it diminishes uh, the flexibility any more than, than any other kind of improvement of the common wood. Um, you know, it was sort of, I would think of it the same way as uh, repaving the walks. That it's, um, it's any, anything that's there that needs to be changed in the future is, is going to be less flexible. Go, I was going to say any other questions from the board before I open this up to public. In the replacement of the walks, um, are the walks being replaced with a semi permanent wood, or is it still going to be asphalt? Um, the, the proposed material at this point is, uh, is precast pavers. Um, that have kind of a brick-like texture, but are not imitation bricks. Uh, and that, uh, I'm looking into whether that makes most sense out there to be built. Those can be installed as permeable or as non-permeable layers, and that's a, that's a detail that we're currently working on. So uh, we're not currently looking at asphalt. Okay, one last question. Yep. Uh, in this proposal, the change in the walkway uh, coming from the driveway next to Seaside 1 up to the police station, uh, the boundaries of that walkway are remaining the same as they are now? Or is it moved <coughs> towards the building or towards the street? Uh, that walkway will be rebuilt where it is, uh, and the stairs will be put in on that same direct uh, path in motion. Was there any consideration given to, uh, and I realize, Mr. Chairman, that you had said we were going to go into design issues here, but I have a question um, that I'd like to understand. Was there any consideration given to moving it closer towards the street so that the linden tree might not have to be sacrificed? Um, at this, I understand it's very late in the day. No, and I'm, I'm very late in the game. And the only reason I'm saying it's, 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 at this point was um, it's, a, it's a slightly complicated sequence of events where initially we weren't looking at rebuilding that walk, and then some at a recent at a, at a different meeting here, um, the concern was raised that that walk, because it slopes right down to the curb is dangerous during the winter and the way to achieve a landing is to put stairs on it. Um, the other the other factor that's come into play is that uh, I don't think we want that walk to be any closer to the proposed memorial uh, than mm -hmm. it is now. Okay, All right. I'm gonna open this up for uh, members of the public to um, comment. Um, Mr. Wolf, if you could uh, just come up there. We have another microphone here. So if there are questions that you need to answer, you can use that. And members of the public, you want to uh, make comments or ask questions, please uh, uh, raise your hand. I'll recognize you, and we'll get you up to the podium to speak. Who's first? Up you go. You're first. Could you pick up the microphone? Thank you. Well, the Daily Forest Street, Manchester. Um, I'm from the point of view of the first transit trees, and that's when we focused on these elms and um, and removed sick elms and took donations for memorial trees. And some of those memorial trees are in the town, in this area that we're talking about. So um, removing something that was put in for a reason for memorial memorializing, I'm not sure. <clears throat> there should be more uh, research into who they memorialized. One was um, before we take them out, uh, they were planted for that reason. So uh, the focus of the early work was that way back when we started it, I was for the dying elms <clears throat> in search of a cure, for finding the disease resistant strain, which now is there. And the, um, that's the one tree that's there already. Um, the, it would be nice to think that the, the linden could be saved with a well around it, but um, 
we, our whole focus was to save trees, so taking them out it was against what we did. So uh, just it, that was our point of view, and um, I just thought it should be said. Do we know, is there records of what trees may be memorial? So I... <laughs> Um, my name is Sue Mittermeier. I'm uh, president of Friends of Manchester Trees. Involved more recently, and we have some members who have been here for a long time who might be able to uh, crew in as well. Um, I looked through the records of memorial trees, and I, I didn't. I found that there are several trees that are referenced um, for town comment, and but specifically behind town hall. I didn't find any record uh, okay. that said those uh, were specifically memorial trees. All right. Thank you. Other folks in the public? Yep, coming up. Oh, I'm sorry, Jennifer Falconer, and I live at 4A Church Street right across from Town Square. Um, Jennifer's the microphone. I think it is. Yeah. No, 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 it's it's turned up. If hey. the green light is on. Yeah, I think it's uh, just not going to the speakers in the back. So, um, I, think, I think everybody will be able to hear me, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, but it picks it up for them. Yeah, still picks it up for to hold it up so that yeah. the reporting is <laughs> getting it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I go back to the question about, um, since everything is, is going to be, if this plan would go forward, would be torn up, um, is there any recourse to, uh, I guess I'm dressing the London first as the healthiest tree and the one that seems to be of the most value. Um, why that path, since it's going to be razzed anyway, couldn't come up uh, maybe even a smaller path? and one that's coming up at an angle that goes a little bit more towards the street and would not interfere with the Veterans Memorial and, and save a beautiful tree. So that would be my first question. Um, there are so many things that seem to be put in motion that involve um, the destruction of trees. And I just really have a tough time with that because you know landscapers all over the world are winning awards for saving trees and we're talking about taking down nine. And I understand that, um, or is it seven? Seven, okay. So I know we have three diseased magnolias, and I don't think anybody is arguing about those, but things like the London um, and the elm that could use a well around it, I would think we'd get a big pat on the back if we save trees with huge canopies that are um, certainly making a much bigger contribution to uh, reducing the carbon footprint by um, shoving more oxygen out there than a 15-foot tree will do in the next 25 years. So to me, those are big, important things that this town should get awards for, not just coming in and scorching the earth and taking out major, major trees that will not be that size, and maybe you can answer that. How long would it take a 15-foot tree to be the size of the trees we're taking down? Um. A lifetime? N not a lifetime, but it's oh, in our lifetime. Oh, in our lifetime. Um, <laughs> I, I um, <laughs> twenty to forty years. Not my lifetime. <laughs> okay, so I think that's a major consideration. Um, that that we should get all the stops. I mean, just this is my feelings. I don't know how other people here feel about it. We should be pulling out all the stops to save these trees. Every single one that can be saved. Um, okay, so I've, I've, I've made that impassioned plea. Um, and then I go back, and we didn't have a chance. We sort of, um, the, the meeting had drug on, and we decided to reconvene today. I was fascinated by the conversation with the tree warden. First of all, I want to know what a tree warden does. Because he obviously, by his own admission, had done nothing on these trees. And I quote him, for 25 years, I think the number was. So what does a tree warden for the town do? What is his function if it's not to take care of the beautiful trees right in front of one of our government buildings? So 
the tree warden is uh, essentially a volunteer position. We, okay. His job is to give us advice and to um, his, his professional opinion mostly on the trees around town. And that's what he does on a, on a fairly regular basis. Um, so Why for he tree here? hearings like this, he's also intimately involved with the um, Friends of the Trees. They can describe a little bit more of the, um, the work that he does with them. Uh, Did he ever advise that these trees be better taken care of, that they be treated for their diseases and the dead limbs trimmed off and made more attractive? I mean, as a tree warden, what I think I'm hearing you say, that that would be a part of his job. And that there would be no suckers on the bottom, there would be no dead branches up there, there would be diseases that would be treated. Would that be in the realm of what a tree warden should do? It could be, yeah. Uh, should be. Okay, so by his own admission, that hasn't been done. So did he make those recommendations? Were they, what happened? Uh, regarding these particular trees, I can't tell you what his day-to-day -day or month-to-day or month um, uh, operations were like. Okay, so then are we to assume that we're going to have a, such, a sudden rush of conscious, put in a lot of trees, and all of a sudden we're going to take care of those? Well, no, this is not about his position. I am. Well, okay, let's put him aside. Let me just ask the question. Pretend we didn't even talk about the tree war. We know that these trees haven't been taken care of in 25 plus years. Why would we assume that we're going to put in 11 new trees and those will be taken care of? So. Um, I understand the point. That was something that we did discuss at the last um, uh, meeting. Uh, and the next budget cycle that comes around, we will be looking to see if we can put more money into the maintenance of trees. Um, <clears throat> but we had no problem coming up with $100,000 to res the town square, take down trees, and put new ones in. $100,000. A town meeting vote. I understand that. I wasn't here, and I apologize for that. I was out of state at the time, so I did not attend that meeting. So I'm a little lame here in saying that, but I guess I'm wondering how those things get come crashing over like a wave of $100,000. To me, that seems like a huge sum of money for a town this size, um, and maybe it isn't. Uh, I'm not an experienced government person here in Manchester, but... Uh, the fact that we have had this a problem of keeping care of our current trees, I just don't have any confidence that we're going to do it with future trees. That really bothers me. I think, I think uh, your point is well taken, uh, that um, trees in Manchester that are public trees uh, need to be maintained and need to be better maintained. Um, I think that the issue is that in terms of the money that's been allocated to redo the, the front area or in front of town hall, is that this is involves trees, but it also involves a lot of other things. If you take Goran and you look at the walkways, the walkways have started to become dangerous because of the cracking and splitting of the walkways. There's a maintenance issue here, and there's maintenance issues all throughout our town. And we have to prioritize as a board and as a town where the money goes to maintain the town. There's not a blank check for us to do whatever we want to do. So I think that, that the issue is well taken, that from my point of view, trees, are, public trees, are part of the infrastructure of the town and should be maintained as, as we maintain other things, um, like the uh, conduits and the pipes and the streets and other things that are infrastructure. But I, but I need you to understand that there are real limits to the amount of money that's available to do any one thing. And you're, you're strongly advocating in terms of trees, and that's, a, that's an impassioned thing for you. That's good. And you should bring that passion to town meeting um, so that you can argue in favor of the town voting money to maintain trees. I, I couldn't agree with you. Um, but there are other things that are going to be competing priorities, and that's why we have a town meeting. So I understand and agree with you totally that the asphalt is becoming, um, it, it's becoming untenable. 
and I guess I would just love to hear. Wonderful, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. I know that I know what you're saying, and I appreciate that. And obviously, there needs to be improvements to um, the asphalt, and I think the idea of the pavers sounds fabulous. But I guess what I really want is to see a plan that would incorporate Manchester winning one of those awards for saving their trees while they improve their town, mm -hmm. and not just scorching the earth and starting over again. That's I all. think the language of scorching the earth is a little bit strong. All the trees for, coming down to me kind of sounds yeah. very, there are, very there are There are seven trees that we're talking about. And we're talking about replacing them with 11 trees. 15 foot trees. We're talking about replacing them with 11 trees. So that's a net gain of four trees for one. And but it's not. Okay. It's, it's not. It's I'd, like not to, I'd like to finish saying what I'm trying to okay. say. Um, the, of the seven trees, the town tree warden and uh, in the hearing last time um, cited five of those trees as very unhealthy and, and needing to be removed. Um, At the end of that meeting, that's not, not what we said. They did uh, not say that. Yes, actually, that was pretty clear. There were a number of the trees that are quite unhealthy. There are a couple that he did say were healthy, and he, he was um, changing his position on whether or not those should be. Um, but he did um, specifically give us a list of the ones that were not very healthy. Um, some of the ones that are being considered today, for example, the Norway maple down at the corner of, um, uh, right at the corner of the side street and, and the center street. Um, the elm tree he was feeling was uh, more healthy. He thought all the magnolias were terrible. And you folks who seem to agree. agree with that too. So the, the characterization that uh, uh, these trees were healthy and that the town and the tree warden was uh, characterizing them healthy, that's not accurate. Um, <clears throat> no, not the magnolias. I don't think anybody is arguing to say magnolias. I think it's the big trees and the big canopies that people are the most concerned about. Okay. So. Um, uh, I, I do think that the, um, I agree with uh, Mr. Turner, the scorched earth characterization. Well, I apologize if that's too strong. I tend to be sometimes a little, well, a little hyperbole yes. oriented. But I think well, the so point I'm making is, wouldn't it be great if we, could, if we could achieve what we wanted to with better paths, maybe more green, and still save some of these trees? Yes. That's all. Hear your point. Okay. Good evening, Bob Reed, 12 Forster Road. I've lived in town for 41 years, as Tom Kehoe once told me, that only makes me a tourist. <laughs> <clears throat> I spent uh, six years on the Conservation Commission in the 90s, and I ended my tour as the chairman. And the reason I bring it up is because I'm not anti-conservation, I'm not conservation. When I was the chairman, I was the one who initiated the plan to buy the uh, Hamilton Woods entire project. The town paid, the board paid, the and the state paid. But it was my idea. <clears throat> now let's get to the trees. <clears throat> I agree with that lady in a number of ways. <clears throat> I didn't realize how much it was going to cost, the $100,000 figure. And that's, as a taxpayer in town, I see my taxes go up all the time. And I'm concerned in one aspect that the tax money gets used judiciously as opposed to, you know, not so much. And I'm not pointing at this plan one way or the other is good, bad, or indifferent. But I'm standing here saying that <clears throat> Bill Hatcher told me a week ago that he planted the majority of those trees 50 years ago. Bill Hatcher, Hatcher Landscaping. So there's, there may be some knowledge to be found about the memorial trees. He's, uh, he, I asked him why he wasn't coming. He had a reason. Um, I wish he would have come. <clears throat> but in the interim, I would like to think that we could save as many of those beautiful, mature, full canopy trees as possible. If, they, if they're dying, as Tom Henderson, who's a friend of mine, if, they, you know, they're, if they're sick and they're going to be a big problem, I defer to Tom Henderson. I'm not an arborist. <clears throat> but I, 
the fact that when I moved here, those trees were probably 25 feet, 15 to 20 feet tall, like we're discussing. And I don't think many of us will live in town, and I plan to pass away in this town. I don't think many of us will live in town when those trees equal the trees we have now. So my last comment was I would like to see everything possible done to save as many of those trees as possible. There's still no reason you, you can't do whatever you want to do with the park. I'm a disabled veteran. I'm proud of you know, the memorial go again, even though I won't be on it because it's only people that left for war from this town. But in the interim, any money saved by ripping down you know, giant full canopy trees and planting smaller trees may be applied elsewhere in town to take care of other town trees. In other words, a solution, not just a um, nasty comment. Thank you. George Smith, 8 Mascanoa Street. I've been coming to these tree hearings for many years. And I've basically taken the position in almost all cases, save the old iconic trees, that even if they're in trouble, let them linger. Prune them, take care of them, yes. yes. So I, yes, I'm in favor of keeping most of those trees. The only exception to that are the two hybrid elms that are there now. Those were placed by Alice Rice's mother uh, to replace the huge American elms that were there before. I would like to see those two elms replaced by an American elm. Those hybrid elms are really sad looking misshapen trees. An American elm would rise very quickly, very fast, and would You'd be able to see the church from School Street, where it was placed. Replaced. The church was placed there in order to be viewed coming down School Street. Oh, and the clock, now you can hardly see the clock. Yeah. Did that trim once years ago, uh, but uh, it grows up two or three feet a year once you top a tree like that. So that's the only exception I would make is think of the future. You know, that's what our trees are all about. Uh, granted, we love the trees there, we like the shade, misshapen as they are, but think of 20 or 30 or 40 years from now, when you have huge, graceful American elms that used to be there, and for future generations, I think it would be a real plus, if, even if you have to make an exception for those two trees. Can I a actually ask you a question, because there's only one elm tree that's being proposed for removal. I understand. And you said two two elms, and so well, the only one that we actually can consider today, is because it's listed in the public hearing, is the one that's specifically listed in this hearing. Is that the one one of the ones that you're referring to? And, and if I had the choice between the two trees, I would take down the elm that you see coming down School Street. That really obstructs the. But that's not. That was intended originally. Okay, but that's not one of the ones that's I know, I understand. The one, the, the one that is being listed to you tonight, you, you are um, suggesting that it should be replaced with another elm? With a, yes, the American elms, we've planted American elms all over town now. Uh, some of those trees are huge at this point. I mean, they're, you know, they're uh, trees that were planted uh, 15 years ago. They're now a foot thick, their base, and they're straight up. They don't obscure the view of the church for a long time. Eventually, those streams would frame the church and the town hall. I happen to like the town hall to some degree. I miss the old Oddfellows Hall that was there when I was a kid. That was a wonderful building. Sad. But nevertheless, I think in terms of distance and framing the church eventually, an American elm is the way to go. And these are disease free. I have not known a, a single Princeton Elm that has ever succumbed to Dutch Elm. It's a mutant that came from New Jersey, and apparently so far it's been totally free of Dutch Elm. Isn't, okay. that, isn't that the one that's planted in the town hall? Isn't that a Princeton Elm? No. The, the two Elms are hybrid, or, or, and they're very undependable. Okay. 
totally different tree, but in terms of in terms of shape. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so, so that you're, you're only taking a position on the elm trees. You don't have it. Do you have an opinion on? Oh them? yeah. As I said at the very beginning, I'm in favor of keeping all the other trees, all old and infirm as they may be. Maybe the magnolias, they may not last, I suppose, too long, but the big canopy trees, the, the linden, uh, we can live with roots under the sidewalk. We do this all over town. And you make the sidewalk concrete, and it probably would be unaffected by the, the linden there. Even the Norway maple, which is a, an invasive pest in Bend, Massachusetts, right now it's a big tree that's giving a lot of shade, and I think it's, it's worth it for that reason. Even if it's hollow or have a, have a problem with health, that tree probably would linger for another 10 or 20 years at least. Yes. Until the youngs grow up. <laughs> Any other? Anything else? No, thank you. Okay. Tom Keogh, 20 Lincoln Street. Um, I'd like the board to consider that there are trees down there that the tree warden has determined should come out. If you go walk out the front door of this uh, town hall, as I have a few thousand times, there are many magnolia trees there that are definitely destined to have a very short life. But the other thing I'd like the board to consider is this, that if you decide that we need to plant seven or nine new trees, that you make sure that worked into the contract of installation of those trees is the care of those trees for a two or three year period of time by the contractor. I would like to be able to continue talking, I'm sorry. So with that in mind, I think that that would be a good use of the budget. I know that the Friends of Manchester Trees over the years have done a lot. In fact, they've spent a great amount of money purchasing a, uh, a water container to go around in the back of the truck and paying people to go around and taking care of the trees. And I appreciate that. And the Friends of Manchester Trees are one of the reasons why we've been designated as a tree city for multiple years. And just for one little question about the budget, um, the $100,000, whether it comes all from tax rate or from taxes and uh, money from uh, community preservation is 0.3%, 0.3% of the entire $32 million budget of the town. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? Rogers, 82 Old Essex Road. Um, I just want to support um, many other people here that if we can retain any of the um, older, large growth trees, it would be important. I don't know. I love warm weather. I am out walking in the sun all the time, but the sun is getting stronger. And I would think that the town would want a common where people would linger, where they will want to appreciate um, what is being built there and that we create an environment where people will enjoy without any type of shade, especially as weather is getting warmer. Um, that will not happen. I'm seeing a very sterile type of environment for a long time there on the Comet um, when there were even bushes taken away from where there's sort of almost like a fountain-like obelisk there. No one hangs around it anymore like it used to be. Greenery attracts people, and it's going to be important if we're going to have memorials built, a common where we want people to enjoy for you know, all different ages. Right now, where there is shade is the only place that I ever see anyone sitting and laboring on the common.
uh, and I'll take Peter next, and then I think I want to stop there unless uh, somebody has something additional to add. Hi, Rick Rogers, 82 Old Essex Road. Um, so I appreciate, I, I'm going to speak up for the American Elm. So it wasn't clear what was being discussed concerning elms before. So the elm tree, I think, uh, for me, there's a really strong emotional attachment to elms. I grew up in Concord, Mass, and we had a canopy of them. I think a lot of people from this generation remember the old elm trees and de being devastated by Dutch elm. Mm -hmm. I think if there's a, a mature elm tree around, we should try to keep it. Um, so that's my piece on that. Um, the other thing is, and I'm sorry, I wasn't at any other hearings. I appreciate adding more greenery to the center, um, but can we look at what that walkway plan looks like? Because I'm just, I'm unclear if we did it to try to create green space, but did we consider the actual foot traffic that people take? Because people ignore paths and just go with their direct route. And did, was that considered when you drew up the plan for the walkways? Yes, it was. Okay, great. Peter Manassi and Plywood Home Road. I'm the director of Manchester Friends of Trees, as is Jared Smith. Um, I have a couple of questions for Toby. Um, the three trees that are coming in that are not native to the area, either New England or to, or to beyond that, uh, what assurance do we have that those trees are going to be successful in our location? Um, Before you answer that, could you do us a favor and remind us specifically the locations where those trees were going to go as well so that we can keep that context? The non-native. Yes. Um. <coughs> okay, the, the three trees that are not native to New England, uh, one of them is the uh, Persian ironwood. Uh, it's, that's the one proposed to be located near the path. Um, that is, um, as I mentioned, my, I, that, it's a tree that I, I've seen succeed in New England. Uh, it's also a rugged tree, as I mentioned, that's being planted in New York as a street tree, which is about as, as, as difficult an environment as, as you can get, and that also tested some salt tolerance. Um, the other two are native to North America, um, but not to New England. One of them is an, uh, the willow oak, which is native as far north as Long Island, um, and um, I, I believe that with where our climate is going and where it is now, that we have very much, we're, we're more similar to Long Island than we were a while ago. Uh, and um, so that's, that's, that's the number two. The number three is um, bald cypress, which is a, it's actually native to Louisiana, um, I've seen it growing successfully uh, in New England on wet sites and dry sites. Uh, it's a, there are some on the Rose Kennedy Greenway in Boston that have done really well. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's another tree that is, uh, is proven hardy in our zone. Would we, uh, would it, but would, would it make more sense to consider trees that are native to our location? and the microclimates of being near the ocean and this kind of environment in order to ensure their success. We see a lot of trees that are being planted by professionals uh, all over, and uh, we see a lot of failure, too. And I just, I just wonder whether or not we have a much better chance of success if we, if we were looking at native trees that have had success in our immediate environment on the North Shore. That's, that's a concern, because there is risk involved in what you're saying. Long Island is fine. The streets in New York are fine. Well, uh, LA is, I mean, uh, Louisiana is fine, but um, and I, uh, I'm just uh, concerned about that. I, I, I think that's, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of native plants, uh, both for their beauty and for their biological uh, benefits, and, and for, um, for the fact that they've improved in this climate. And so uh, there, are, there are oaks, other oaks that are native here that would do well here. We, we also have swamp white oak in the proposed plan, but their uh, chestnut oak would work great here. Um, uh, the uh, chinkapin oak would do well here. Um, the uh, Persian ironwood, um, that's a site. I was on my way here and I thought, well, uh, uh, hot hornbeam is a native tree that also has a similar attributes. It doesn't have a spectacular fall color, but it's a good, relatively small, uh, meaning 30 to 40 feet native tree. Uh, and 
the bald cypress. Uh, honestly, that is a tree I love, but that's it's not about what trees I love. It's uh, and that you know there's certain other trees that could succeed there. Where will the trees be sourced? Um, that would be based. That would be up to the contractor. Um, so the contractor would identify the nursery, nurseries that had them in stock. Uh, I would go inspect the trees at the nursery. I would have the uh, right to reject them at the nursery or when delivered on site if they haven't been handled well. Uh, and quite often at a nursery, I've had the experience of looking at the tree of the specified species, thinking they're kind of okay, and then being shown some trees of a similar, similar species, similar size, and making that substitution at the nursery. And that's uh, been a, a good way to get the best trees uh, at that point. So uh, I would hope that they would come from New England nurseries. Many trees in this area are sourced from uh, originally grown in nurseries in the mid-Atlantic. Uh, and generally, they have very good success rates here. Is the, uh, is the contractor it's the same as the nursery, or is the contractor a separate entity? The contractor is a separate entity. And what what is their what what uh, what are their credentials or what is their uh, back uh, that hasn't been selected yet who the contract would be right the, the contractor would be selected by the town and and with whose input um, there would be uh, some some requirements as to what experience they have and their experience in business and um, actually on the it, I can't really speak directly to the bid process for this. But I, I would assume that we would, we would find out from a number of locations where this contractor has planted trees, how well they've done, and how the yeah. success they've gained. And, 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 uh, you're asking some pretty good relevant questions, but I don't think the questions are actually relevant to the hearing okay. tonight. Um, the, we're, what we're trying to decide is what we're going to do about the trees that have been selected. For the questions are good ones, but, but they're, they're not actually part of this hearing. Um, and I just, Eli, just give me one, one, uh, one last thing. What, what kind, of, in general, what kind of growth rate are we looking at with a 15 to 8, 18 foot tree? Roughly, again, all trees are different in this sense, but what should we be looking at in terms of a, of a growth rate? And what kind of a, what kind of an initial canopy will that tree have? Um, the, a tree of that size would typically have, um, about an eight foot to ten foot diameter canopy, um, and growth rate. Typically, when trees are transplanted, they take a few years to recover from the transplant shock, and so you see fairly minimal growth for a year or two. And then, uh, with the red maples, for example, I expect to see um, that sort of bounce back and get to be closer to a foot or eighteen inches uh, per year uh, once it really hits its stride. Uh, the oaks tend to be somewhat slower growing. Um, the honey locust is a fast growing tree. Um, so these have been selected in part. Uh, we want trees that are going to be strong, but these are selected in part for a quick growth, a relatively fast growth rate. Toby, you talked about uh, that the plant is flexible. Would, uh, was there consideration given the fact that we want to have uh, uh, trees with canopies for the good reason of shade and, 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 and climate and all of that? What about the proposal of, of having of actually purchasing much larger trees, but fewer of them, and plant them over a period of time? I the larger I like I, I think it's, it makes sense to include some larger trees. The larger trees tend to recover from the stress of transplant more slowly than the smaller or medium-sized trees, so they. Um, they don't. Re they don't. After ten years, you won't know which ones were planted at the larger size. Um, the I think the idea of initiating a program where we uh, plant the trees shown here sooner and then come back in and add trees over time is a great way to get a healthy and multi-age stand of trees so they don't all mature at the same time. They don't all plant at the same time. But you've got to you've got to start somewhere, so I think it's important to put in trees in, in large numbers. I think the tree warden is um, the, the time in the past when we've asked about replacing trees that uh, people have asked to come down. Tree warden has recommended um, putting in trees that are two and a half to four inch caliper at the very most um, for that exact reason. It says that the smaller trees establish quicker and thrive faster. 
um, and the larger ones are more challenging. Right, a four-inch pallet would be a 15-foot tree typically, though, correct? Right, that would be taller than the tree. Okay. Okay. Uh, I wanted to mention about budget concerns because they're really, you know, I understand uh, what the board member was saying about the fact that budgets have to be spread around and there are different needs and there are sidewalks and so forth. The trees in front of Town Hall here have been shamefully neglected for the last 25 years. The membership, uh, the leadership of this town have walked by those trees for 25 years and haven't said a word about them. They just sort of uh, let them go in a sense. And so we, that's, that's been, they've been neglected. And so unless there's a long-term plan for these trees, there's a chance that we're going to have failure. A two or three year time period where the tree is going to be cared for by whomever is, is not long enough. This has to be an ongoing program, which means that there needs to be, there seriously needs to be money put aside. And the money that's put aside now for trees is simply, a, is simply to remove dead trees. There's no money that's left over for anything but doing that. And I'm sure Greg would, would, uh, would agree with that. So we need to really seriously look at having, uh, having a real mandate to, to, and, uh, to make sure that we have the budgetary considerations in place to care for these trees beyond year two or year three. Because otherwise, they could fall into disrepair because you know, we're just, we just don't have the money to do it. And so uh, this whole plan is, that we're looking at really has to have that in place. And that's why I, I asked Greg at the last meeting whether or not any of this $100,000 was being put aside to maintain the current trees that are there, let alone the trees that are being planted. And so it's not good enough to say that, well, after two or three years, or, or you know, we may not have the money because of sidewalks and other things, you've got to make a commitment to this program now. And, and, uh, and you've got fun, and it's got to be more than two or three years. It's got to be an ongoing program. So uh, I just want to make those points. Thank you. So at this point, I'm going to bring this back to the um, board. Uh, I had uh, one question, and I'll let the board members ask any additional questions. Um, so <clears throat> there is one Norway maple, uh, 18 inch Norway maple, just to the um, Central Street side of the walkway, uh, the, the walkway up to the police station. Um, and it's um, probably closest to the um, town hall side of the Veterans Memorial. Um, and what I'm not clear on right now is if the construction of the memorial requires that tree to be removed or it's being recommended or you think it will not do well because of the construction of the memorial. Can you characterize that for me? Um, the construction of the memorial, it's not directly on top of that tree, but it would remove a significant portion of the tree's roots. So, the tree is not like this. Okay. So, <clears throat> the memorial will therefore affect the, um, the tree closest to Central Street, which is the Norway Maple, and that Norway Maple. Okay. Any other questions from the board right now? That's the one Tom said. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Health issues. Health, major health the issues. So you can see yeah. right into the heart. The heart The heart uh, Is that the one you're referring to? Yeah. Yes. Comments or thoughts right now? Questions? Any more questions for any of the boards or Toby? I um, would very much like to see us try to keep the, that linden. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and the elm. There's a strong attachment to it. <clears throat> if at all possible. I just, <clears throat> you know. Mm -hmm. The next group sitting here in 10 years potentially are faced with then what to do with that elm. And I guess that's what happens to the next group. Yeah. Ten years from now. We've done that before. <coughs> yep. I, mean, I you know, I think the other trees need to <coughs> the magnolias need to come down. They're not healthy. They're just they're just not. And the others are in decline enough according to the
tree warden. I'm, I'm not a tree expert. I have to I have to rely on what those in the business say, like I would even if I was trying to determine cutting down my own trees on my own property. So I would very much like to see <clears throat> some manipulation of the plan to keep that wind in a meal. I would agree, and I, I think that um, with the magnolias, um, they're, you can see how much they're struggling. Yeah. And as, as well as the Norway maple, and I, I can appreciate um, large canopy. Um, however, they're not healthy trees. They are invasive species. And I think that, um, I like the, the plan of incorporating different types of trees and sizes that also look down the road and what we're facing climate-wise. Um, while I would love to see native plants, I'm always a fan of doing native. Native may not thrive as well as some of these <coughs> other trees. So um, I would agree with saving the linden and the elm if at all. said just now. Um, the magnolias are not shade trees. Um, in terms of the magnolias that are out front of this building. Um, and I don't think there's any question that, that those trees are very unhealthy. Um, I think one of them has barely leafed out this year. Um, I'm concerned about the hardwood rot and the Norway maple at the corner. Um, and but that tree, um, that tree is very challenged right now. And any construction around it is going to make it even more challenged. Um, Linden and the elm, I would really like to retain. Uh, but I think at the same time, we have to make a very strong commitment to uh, pruning the elm and getting it to be as healthy as it can. The only question I have is, is on the other tree that was designated a Norway maple in the plan, but Tom said that it was not a Norway maple, he said it was a different kind of maple. Uh, it's not native to this area. Um, and that that tree appears, to my eyes, you it out, to um, be struggling at least on one side. Um, I'm not sure why, because it appears to be the side away from the road, as opposed to close to the road, um, where it had more impact of plowing and salting and all that, and the walkway salting. Um, Blue didn't seem to thrive on that salt. I don't know what, I don't know what <laughs> could possibly hurt that. But, um, so I, I would be concerned about that tree as well. And uh, would advocate for its being replaced. So that's the so that that is both the Norway maples. Both of the both of the trees that are designated on this plant are Norway maples. Yeah. Um, I just I did want to um, just confirm, and I know you mentioned that there's no designation that they're memorial trees that we can find. So that's the, that I think is an important aspect, knowing that they're not memorial trees. Um, but also I do think that um, it is important to make sure that 
the trees that are there that we're going to save, as well as the ones that will be planted that maintenance is factored in mm -hmm. as a portion of this. They have to be maintained. <laughs> I think I think I have a different approach to this. I, I I look at the I look at the broader space, and I look in a ten to twenty year time frame, and mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that this building will remain as is, or even the purpose of this building. Um, particularly when I look at some of the offices and the apartments, I think the needs are changing within the walls of this building, and so this space. I wouldn't want to see drastic change in this space when I think potentially in the 10 to 20 year time frame uh, that we may have bigger changes or considerations for this area of town. So I would hate to lose uh, substantial trees until we've you know, thought about it in the, in the context of a bigger change. I, I think it would be unfortunate to lose these trees and then to have yet more, more potential change in the 10 to 20 year time frame. I'd rather Preserve what we have. Ill, the, the unhealthy. No, no, I, I'm I'm thinking mostly about the elm um, um, and the linden. Uh, magnolias. It sounds like there's a majority of voices tonight, plus what I've heard from this group, that um, the magnolias are not in good shape. Anyways, um, I'm not. I'm less clear on the tree next to the Um but. Um, in the interest of the broader space and the and the and the options of that the town should preserve, mm -hmm. I, I would not want to see dramatic change beyond the magnolias. Well, so um, I'm going to disagree. Um, a bit. Um, we don't have any um, specific, any even glimmers of a specific plan for doing a significant um, change to where Town Hall is going to be in the next 10 or 20 years. So okay. I, think, I don't think we should um, forego um, improvements to what is definitely going to be um, the, the Town Hall for the next 10 to 20 years. Um, and at the end of that time period, 20 years, even if we did move, um, the town hall to some other um, unknown lo location, um, <clears throat> or break it up into little constituent parts somehow. Um, the, the, the trees that we're talking about will by then be um, highly established and um, providing a, a new and a pretty vibrant um, location. Maybe, maybe not. Why? Because you suspect that well, it sounds like die. there's a risk when you plant any new tree. But we have trees today. We know it's an asset that we know. So why would we get rid of an asset we know for a building that I may be the only person in this room who believes this, but I don't believe that this building is going to be able to sustain the existing current use for another 20 years. But are you, are you I, saying to get rid of? I, I'm, I'm confused. I'm saying Let to not go. change anything because I think there's much bigger change in the 10 to 20 year time frame for this broader space, and I don't think we're looking at it in the context of time. I think we're looking at this in the context of right now. So and don't change anything, including the magnolias. And no, I specifically said that the magnolias I thought were fine based on what I've heard tonight, plus what I've heard from this board. I'm speaking specifically. So about don't put any new trees in. Take out the. Can I finish? I'm specifically talking about the elm and the linden. Okay. And I, I, I'm not clear on the tree next to the memorial. Oh, all right. I, I, I misinterpreted what you said. No, I got it. <clears throat> That's why we discuss it. <clears throat> I think the option value for the town is far greater by not making changes because I do believe in the years to come we're going to have much bigger changes to contemplate about this broader space. I would rather make decisions about. Significant, this is a significant town space. I think you start changing this now, you're, I think you're making changes in a very short-term view when you know there's bigger changes in the horizon beyond when maybe an on in this town. Who knows? I, I have no idea when this building is going to have its, its coming, but it will. And therefore, I want to preserve as much of the heritage of this town, including the church, including these 
older trees and, and keep those as assets because I think what we have today is an asset. But, but there's a counterpoint. To, I mean, I mean, for for the past several years, we've talked about a very major renovation to the front of this building, you know, the Veterans Memorial. We've passed it and supported it multiple times. Um, that's a substantive change, which we have agreed on on several different occasions. Because I do believe not only not only did we agree on it, there was a right before that's town meeting. I mean, I wasn't, I'm not opposed to them anymore. Yeah, okay, but you're, that's you're a substantive using, change to the fact that you still use the whole other variable. No, I, I don't think I did because you've been using fairly. Um, I'm talking about a building, I'm not talking about a war memorial. I think the war memorial contributes to the use of the war memorial. Veterans but, Memorial. Excuse me. Forgive Sorry. me. It's not a war memorial. I apologize. Right, thank thank you. you. Veterans Memorial. Thank you. So, uh, of which my father was in this town as well. So. I'm getting tripped up on some of your language. I view this space, and I have all along, in all the discussions I've been a part of, including the discussions about the Veterans Memorial, is this space is a critical piece of the town. It's probably the most valuable public space that this town has. I've long been critical of the plan as not keeping the broader context of the space of this area of town in mind in its design, or in the thought process. And I remember making comments about that. I'm interested in preserving the broader context of this space. I think the Veterans Memorial contributes to the public usage of this part of town. I'm not convinced that over the 10 to 20 year horizon that this building will continue to be an active part of this space. Therefore, I do not believe in changing unnecessarily key pieces to this space, like these trees. But isn't this, I mean, this has always been the town common. Yes. And it will remain that. Yes. It will, re regardless of what happens to the building or doesn't happen to the building. Correct. This will be the town common. Now, maintaining the heritage or the integrity, it's been changed several times. But I, I agree with that. But why, why are we going to be changing it more when we know even bigger changes in the horizon to come? We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't know that. You feel that that's like I yes. told you that I might be the only person in this room who believes this. But I know I've spent enough time talking to the departments that operate this building to know that functionally you, this building will not necessarily continue to be operating. So anyway, this is my opinion. This is how I'm going to influence my voting. I'm happy to talk about it all night long, but I am not a fan of cutting down the limbs and the elm. Period. Okay. My reasoning may be different than yours. I'll say it again. I think you're getting tripped up by your language a little bit. Because okay. your language keeps going from just the, the elm and the linden to being all inclusive. No, no, you're 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 not hearing me. I'm specifically always talking about the linden and the elm, and I also I don't know if I'm have a final conclusion about the tree next to the veterans memorial. I've been very consistent every time I've said this. I, I do believe that the magnolias are not necessarily as critical to the space. Okay. I don't think I've changed whatsoever in what I've said. No, but I think but, the rest of us continually are being. Uh, that's fine, that's why I'm explaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I haven't said anything. Well, I have, but I haven't um, expressed opinions. So, um, so, um, might not seem like it because I'm presiding over a year and two, you know, potentially removed trees, but I am um, supportive of um, trees and as many trees as we can. And those of you who have, may or may not have been at other tree, hearing, tree removal hearings will know that uh, uh, this board generally takes a uh, a careful approach to removing trees. Um, I think I share everybody's opinion about the, the elm and the linden. Um, the magnolias, um, I'm unimpressed by. Uh, and I think that we can take those out and new trees well within our lifetime we have much, much better trees than what we have with the magnolias. Um, almost immediately. Uh, I like the idea of adding uh, more trees, and, and there's a, you know, I went around and spent some time looking at the stakes that are out there uh, today, and I think that that will be a large um, 
benefit to the entire uh, area. I hope they take off in a hurry. Um, the two trees that I've had uh, the most trouble with are the two Norway maples, but um, uh, I, I am going to rely a little bit on the uh, tree warden's um, advice that those trees are not particularly healthy. And, um, and also I'm going to lean on the fact that we as a town did um, put a lot of time and uh, commitment into the veterans in the morning. Um, so I think that um, uh, I re reluctantly would support the removal of those two Norway maples. I want to keep the elm and the linden, do everything that we can possibly do to preserve those and um, replace the magnolias as quickly as we can with uh, uh, new, healthy, and bigger and better trees. Um, that, that's where I stand right now. Um, any other comments from the board right now? Can I get a, um, then a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. So, all in favor? No, Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, okay, so there are uh, seven trees and to be very clear, I'm going to use the designation that is on um, uh, our, well, I just want to look and see come right off the designation of public hearing is better. Yeah. That's the way it should be there, whatever the motion ends up in. So the, the original public hearing, uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, stated it this way. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing um, at a town hall for discussion and possible decision on the removal of fallen trees on the town top. And this is a quote from the public hearing. Behind the benches, a 26 inch, inch elm. Behind the benches, 6, 8, and 10 inch magnolias. Next to the war memorial, veterans Veteran. memorial. I don't know why it keeps being said that way. 26 inch Norway maple along the town hall driveway an 18 inch Norway maple and along the town hall driveway 26 inch window and of those seven trees the two that we've discussed as pretty much universally as ones that we want to preserve are the 26 inch elm and the 26 inch linden um, and everybody has expressed um, not a very strong opinion to, for saving the magnolias. And the only place where there's been some differentiation on the board with respect to the about the two Norway maples. So um, that's, that's where we stand. Um, and uh, I'll take any motion. Discuss it more too because there's an opportunity to discuss it. I'll make a motion to, well, what's the best way? Yeah. To list the trees that yeah, my to, motion is to remove? Yes. Is that the best way to do it? Okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion to, per the public hearing notice, remove the trees located behind the benches, the six, the eight, and the 10 inch magnolias next to Memorial. 26 inch Norway maple, a long town hall driveway, 18 inch Norway maple. That's, yep. Okay. Will there be a hearing on that as well? Another one, future hearing? What's that? There won't be a future hearing on that, will it? There will not. No. This is the night okay. we're making this decision. I'm going to uh, so, have discussion on this motion <clears throat> right afterwards after we get a second. Second. Okay. All right. Now, any discussion among the board? Is it possible to do it, and I agree with the removal of all five trees, is it possible to do it in stages where, um, or at least after the summer, to m remove the two large Norway maples so that we enjoy the benefit during the summer months? 
construction would not happen until the fall. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion from the board. So in your groupings, you, you suggested that there was variation on the Norway maple. But we're grouping it with the what we're immediately grouping it with the bangles. I just no. read it off the way it's listed on the public hearing. If you want to amend it, you right. may. Or discuss it. Let's we'll start by discussing it. Well, I, I, I don't think there's disagreement on my noise. I'm just trying to make sure that we're... I, I picked up from your language that there was this, this, this potential difference on the issue of the Norway Nobles. Yeah, you're not sure about them. I'm not sure about it. You know, I have mixed feelings about the Norway maples, but I think that I'm relying on so the why we talk when we vote on the magnolias? What? When we vote on the magnolias and discuss the maples. Mm -hmm. Sure. Could we, could we split the vote out that way, Greg? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Right. So I'll amend mine. You'll amend your I'll amend um, my motion. motion to just include the magnolias? Yes. All right. First vote. The, for the first vote, right. Yes. Do you have that signing? Yeah. Okay. I second that. All right. Any discussion on the board? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Right. Right. Opposed? Okay. That's the magnolias. Yep. Now, let's do this the regular way. Take a motion regarding the uh, two Norway maples. Or do you want those to be in double individually? Or you just vote to, I mean, if we're all in agreement, you just vote to support the maintaining of the limit in the elm. What's that? I'm just trying to figure out how we move, move quickly. What, we do not need to discuss the limit in the elm because we only need to discuss the trees we're actually going to remove. Okay. We've already expressed an opinion to okay. um, right. not remove those by default unless we specifically yeah. say it's fine. Okay. So, could I refer back to you, Toby, for a minute? Um, so, now in conversation just strictly about the 26 inch Norway maple and the 19 inch Norway maple. 26 inches next to the memorial, 18 inches listed along Town Hall Driveway. Can you talk to us for a minute about the implications of where the plan is now if those trees were to stay? The what would have to happen? The Norway maple that's closest uh, to Central Street? Yes is physically where the path to the okay. memorial is proposed. And that so is one of the trees that the tree, the tree warden said, I, if I'm not mistaken from the notes I was scribbling last time, was not healthy. Right. That, that tree is just not problems. healthy. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Now the next one. The, the other one is located between the retaining wall that is part of the memorial uh, that has the the slabs, yep. uh, memorial stones uh, affixed to it, okay. and the where the stairs will be built, and so um, that will be losing its roots yep. on both sides. And my biggest concern is that it would be structurally unstable uh, because of the construction that's happening on both sides. Which is what the tree board indicated mm -hmm. the first part of the hearing as well. Thank you for the clarification. And so, just to clarify, also that. The Veterans Memorial. This is something separate. This is already going. This is mm -hmm. this is this is something that it's all been voted, done and dusted. This is going to happen. So if we don't take that tree down, and it, it does become unstable and it's in poor condition anyway, no, that no. could be a risk. Yeah, we would find out about it because the yeah. condition of the tree would decline, and then we'd have to take it out. So then we don't benefit from getting a tree put in now. Right. So I think I'd go back a little bit to last, the first portion of the hearing, two weeks ago, whenever it was we met. Um, not only did we have this tree hearing, these tree hearings, we also had another tree mm -hmm. hearing where we did vote to remove trees that were not healthy. And I think that's important to kind of know that. We're not just cutting trees down. When we make these decisions, we're making it based on the opinions of the tree, the tree board to when they're not healthy trees. Right. I mean, we voted a week ago, two weeks ago, to take down three 
unhealthy traits. And we voted to I just keep need and maintain one, one. that, that yes. was a heritage tree, right? Yes. And that, that just needed maintenance. Right. So I just felt like yeah. we kind of needed to remind ourselves yes. of that. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I just need to clarify something that I said, sure. uh, which is that my, my concern with the Norway where I described the roots being disturbed yeah. isn't that it will decline, although it would, it's that it will physically fall over yes. in the next heavy storm. So right. that's that's the right. immediate risk I'm looking for. Oh, that is different. Can I ask you a question? It appears in the Tree replacement plan that um, this tree that we're talking about is the Norway maple that's closest to the path. Um, that there's another tree going to be planted. What kind of a tree will be planted? Sold my notes. And its root system won't be bothered by the retaining wall for the Veterans Memorial or the side, the walkway for the. The root system won't be bothered by that. Yes. Yes. Thank you. What kind of tree was? Sorry, uh, red maple. Red maple. Red maple. Yeah. How tall are they? Um, they're they can be up to sixty or eighty feet tall. How tall will it be when it's put in? Um, not 60 or 80 feet tall. That would be 15 to 20 feet tall. And is, is the one that's set to replace the Norway maple that's closer to Central Street, is that also a red maple? Uh, no, that's a swamp white oak, um, which will go in at a similar size and will also be a large tree. Swamp white oak native? Ah, uh, yes, native tree. All right. Um, uh, can we start by getting a motion on the lower maple so that we're following the process? Which one? The 26 inch? Both. 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 Yeah. yeah. I would like to make a motion um, to approve the removal of the 26 diameter Norway maple next to the Veterans Memorial, as well as the 18-inch Norway maple along Town Hall Driveway. And I will second that, and now let's do our final discussion on this. Um, and I will start. Um, I, uh, the one that I actually was really the most concerned about was uh, removing the one up by the Town Hall walkway. Um, I think that I am swayed by the, well, both the, the town and tree warden's opinion that the Norway, both, both of them were not particularly healthy, also by the notion that the construction of the memorial is going to um, really be too much for that tree because it's going to be receiving construction on both sides. Um, so uh, I, would, uh, I would support this motion. Further discussion. As a, as a comment, I, I'm not, in, in retrospect, and I, you know, I, I include myself in this criticism. I'm, I'm not, I'm not crazy about how we've gotten here, because I feel like these these decisions are kind of layered independently. <clears throat> and back to one of my earlier comments, like I don't feel like we consider the space in, in its in its cohesive whole. Um, the Veterans Memorial, the, the design, the layout, these, these kind of have residual consequences, like the elimination of trees, which was not really a part of the early consideration of some of these projects. They're all good projects. I'm not criticizing the merits of the projects. It's just what ends up happening is these converge in a common public space, and there are consequences that we didn't foresee. <clears throat> and I think that's what's going to stick in a lot of people's mind. So I, I think there's a criticism um, is that we're not, you know, we're not seeing these things in, in three dimensions. We're seeing them in two dimensions as, in, as an independent project. And um, I, I'm concerned about this public space 
as a result, because there are, there are cumulative changes that are happening, even if we didn't necessarily intend them. Now, the, you know, the, the decay of the trees is the decay of the trees. That's, that's a fact of nature, but the, it still leaves the fact that if these trees were healthy, for example, that we would have actually an even bigger problem of deliberation. And so it gets back to the process of how we got here, which I think is flawed. I won't argue with you on that. So I'll, I'll vote to support because the trees sound like they're going to come down anyways, but I'm not voting with any enthusiasm because I think we kind of failed here. I'm curious what you mean we failed. I don't think we look at things holistically. I think we look at them as piece parts, and then when they all come together, we, we you know, and again, this is this is things you learn in hindsight. So you know, you can't be too hard in your criticism, but this is an important public space. And I think you know, as we deal with these types of spaces, we have to be even more on guard for what's happening because you know, there's a lot of people that have grown up, spent their entire lives in the sound that this space means a lot, and I think we need to protect that. I would agree. And I think that it's meant a lot to anybody who's lived in this town for almost 375 years. And it has evolved over those years. So I, I understand what you're saying about looking at it holistically. Um, but I don't necessarily feel that we have failed. What's been before us right now, I mean, this is, this is a plan that's already been approved by the town to change this. What's before us right now is to look at the trees and, and assess how we deal with them. Right, but when the town voted on it, they weren't given that information about the trees. So there's a cumulative effect to these decisions that... But that's, that's and, and what I'm getting at is that that's what's our job. Yeah. These are the small things that come before us, while they may not seem small, relative they are. So we say, this is healthy, this certainly merits trying to save three almost dead magnolias. What I'm getting at is, I don't feel we failed here. I feel we have done the job that we've been asked to do, we've listened to public comment, and we're still trying to do what is best for the my town. Point, my point of failure is in seeing a sensitive space like this at, you know, holistically. Is, is where the failure is. I don't think we've failed in the process of listening to each project, but I think in this particular kind of public space, we need to look at it three-dimensionally. And, we, and we didn't. I don't think we looked at it when we were looking, even in the process a few months ago when we were talking about the layout, the design, it was one of the discussions that was made. We asked for a, three, we asked for a rendering, I don't believe it ever came, of looking at it in, in, in profile. So these are the types of things that we need to look at it three-dimensional. Then at that time, we should have gone back and said, I think we hey, asked. This is, we, but, but I'm just saying that to say right now that we failed, I think Technically, is, we did, is, Becky. Because I, I remember I actually asking for this. But I, I, then we should have pursued that. I think we tried. But to say, <laughs> I'm just, I, I don't. But anyways, we can, we can, we can get rid of the trees because they're going to fall down. But I think, I think there's a lesson learned here, Becky. I'm not trying to preserve this space statically because it's it's you're right this, this space has evolved but we have to manage that evolution and I don't yeah. think we necessarily have in this case. Okay, I I think the the biggest failure that would come out of this discussion is if we fail to recognize the importance of maintaining the trees in our town that are public trees in a way that keeps them healthy as long as they, as they would be healthy. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. If these two trees, these two, these two maples were healthy trees, um, I think that uh, there would be very strong arguments about, wait a minute, we need to revisit um, the design of this memorial because the memorial is causing this destruction. But the fact of the matter is that the trees aren't healthy. Yeah, I don't, and I don't, that's that's Tom's that's Tom's opinion. There's no debate on that. There's no debate on on the trees. But but the failure that would come out of this discussion, I can't go back and and, and you know say we failed 
for such a long period of time as you're describing the last two years of the discussions around this proposal. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I wasn't part of the board at that time. I'm saying that because I sat in these meetings as well. But my, my concern is my, the failure of this discussion would be if we do not maintain and set aside funds to maintain uh, the tree infrastructure of our town. And I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, that includes taking care of the elm tree in front of First Parish Church, which is really in need of pruning, but so are the other trees that are in that area. Um, and maintaining the trees is going to be a town responsibility. The contractor, you might be able to get them to do two or three years on their, their, their trees, but that two or three years has to be followed by the town taking over responsibility if, in fact, we could get such a contract from a contractor. So uh, it's getting time to for us to vote on this. So I'm going to ask uh, for all in favor of removing the two uh, Maori maples. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, that concludes item four on the agenda. Sonia, do you have everything you need? Hmm. I hope I do. Okay. <laughs> we can go yeah. through them. Yeah. 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 So you, right now, you've got the five trees, the magnolias, and then the two Norway maples for yeah. removal. Mm -hmm. And yep. to ma and maintaining, maintaining the, the linden and the elm. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that by default. I know that wasn't a motion, no. but just because you didn't bring it up. Right. Mr. Wolf, thank you for coming. Thank you very evening. much for your expertise thank and you. your guidance and your patience. Thank, thank you all for your care to this. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's inspiring to see. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Mr. 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 Thank you, Yep, I'm going to jump back up to that. Yeah, do the handbook. Greg, you want to take the handbook? Sure. Yep. So the, um, the handbook is in draft form um, covering the basics of uh, committee and board duties, um, trying to provide the overview. I think. Um, I think some more information about goal setting and yes. the board. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Making the time to the master plan yeah. that could be a helpful addition. Yeah. Um, and and we talked about convening boards um, on a, at least on an annual basis to, to share information and that sort of thing. So that's another piece. If the, I was going to say that wasn't in there. That's not a in there. right. Um, um, the other thing I wondered is um, some paragraph about use of social media or how, uh, I, I, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of an open can, but one that we need to figure out. Do, do we have a town policy about social media? Well, it, that's, it's been banned, there's, there's been many conversations. We do have a new one, a proposed of, uh, personnel handbook that you'll see at your next meeting. Right, so I just wonder if we there's, could incorporate that. I, I, I don't know, I just think yeah, it's, could. yeah, it's, probably should be part of the next step in conversation with this. We could, we could literally take that same chap, same section out of the personnel handbook and put it in the boards and committee handbook. It'd be great to see that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, we're going to see that in the next handbook yeah. that's yeah. coming, and then maybe we'd have a better idea if it was something we wanted to include. At that time, council may have uh, options for us. Yeah. 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 Well, because we kind of had some of those conversations about yeah. how Tempted though you may be to hop on and answer somebody's question, it begins to become part and parcel of the open meeting. Right. So I don't. Probably when I got to the uh, when I get, got to the open meeting last section, I thought, hmm, is this where we? Yeah. Yeah, something. I don't know. It's just a note I scribbled. Well, it used to be. I don't know if it's still the same, but it, it used to be that these devices were not allowed in under open meeting law, and this is probably 
98 yeah, years ago. Yeah, somewhat evolved. So, you yeah. see a lot of boards now aren't even using paper. They're all on. That's what I think. Mine's right, on, they're all right. So. I think I just mean more in general of posting information and how it needs to be managed so that it doesn't violate any open meeting law or, like I say, the quick up, on, a great up onto social media because you're really tempted to answer somebody's question, but yeah. then yep. then if the, con if the conversation keeps continuing on that social media tool, right. uh-oh. Right. So I, I, I don't know. We've had some, yep. this conversation on the board level about it. I just, I don't know where it fits. I so think I just I think scribbled a note. Right. Into this handle. Mm -hmm. Just scribble the note so we'll, that we got to figure out where we'll, to put it. We'll have that before you at your next meeting, and okay. we can see if that you feel like that's addressing an issue, or if it needs to be a little tailored more okay. for boards and committees. Okay. Uh, was that a? I'm sorry, I missed that. That's okay. I, I, I got it. So okay. Yeah. Thank you. I would add something about what I think a lot of people that are volunteering haven't necessarily been in public positions, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a difference between expressing your personal point of view and bringing personal expertise and subject matter expertise, and the job of being in a public position and representing the interests of the town. And I noticed that it's a very technical document, which is great. It covers a tremendous amount, but there is, at the heart of it, this responsibility of what, what this person is doing uh, in terms of serving the town, and, and that balance between expressing your personal point of view with maintaining the interests of the public good I think there was some... But a little bit more color. I didn't see anything in detail, but just, and I don't think it needs to be particularly exhaustive because I, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's books written about this and we don't have space for that. But I think just some acknowledgement of how you balance that, mm -hmm. even just in general broad terms, just have it represented as an acknowledgement. Yeah. Would you see that happening in the preface? Maybe in the preface, you know, somewhere. Even maybe at the end, just as a final reminder to say, you know, you have this. Position. Well, here, here I, I don't know if, if I'm getting or misunderstanding what you're thinking, Arthur. It is important that you remember the best interests of the town, present or future, be considered. It is equally important to remember that you represent the entire town and not only one segment. Single approach solutions to problems may be the best option for your committee, but may not be in the best interest of the town in the broader sense. So I think All it, plausible sorry. solutions need to be explored with many factors in mind. Your decision may have an impact on other programs or plans. So I might Is that see, where you're going? Yeah, yeah I, miss, I actually read okay. it looking for something like that. So maybe just continuing in another couple of sentences, which talks a little bit more about personal Person. point of view. Okay, versus... so Greg, that's in the preface in the one, two, three, fourth paragraph. Because that's what I wasn't sure yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's I, mean, I, I think we should acknowledge that, that personal point of view is actually incredibly valuable because that's what we need people's expertise, but it's that, if just adding on to what she just read, I would just right. add so a couple more sentences paragraph. which just helps them out a little bit to mm -hmm. at least illuminate that you do need to be keeping a fine balance between <laughs> right. personal point of view versus what's in the interest of the town. I think there was another little blip in there, but I agree. Yeah. Something more right there in the very beginning of someone reading their handbook. Right. Um, a little, little bit late to be seeing this. So some, uh, there's, uh, one thing about this handbook is it is pretty large. Um, there are some things that we could um, consider at some point for reduction to references to state documents, like the conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I kind of disagree. Yeah. I think I think something that's available right in right for someone to refer to in a document is is better. I mean I, I work with handbooks and that kind of thing and when you're having a conversation with someone it's I find it follow. easier to say, well you know, it's in the handbook, here's the information, here's the verses, go to this website and you find this and you find this. I, that's it's my own personal thought on one of the goals of this handbook. Okay. And some people don't go that extra bit. As well, you're right. Saying, not everyone has a comfort level, maybe, with yeah. trying to find stuff, even if they're pointed to it in a document, to then have to go somewhere else yeah. to actually find mm -hmm. that information. Yeah. That's all. We have a wide range of 
It was surprising it was to me, page. actually, Eli, how short this document was. Mm -hmm. Given the amount of booklets and other papers that were handed to me over the past <laughs> three weeks um, to uh, get up to speed on not including our regular meeting notes. Um, I, I was surprised at that, how short this is. And it does do, you know, things like uh, conflict of interest is very brief and tickles enough and then references to, you're supposed to be reviewing this website, the state website, biannually. Well, and that falls to Christina anyway to do those checkoffs and reminders anyway. Yeah. Yeah, town clerk gets all those, gets everybody when they're supposed to get all those yeah. sign those down. I, it, I think it's a great swap, yeah. first swap, swap at it, yeah. I, I, yeah. I would like to see the, the appendices marked as such. Yes. Because it moves yeah. to page 12 and, and it looks like a continuation of page 11 of the front page. Um, yeah, they need to be labeled. They need yeah, to be labeled as such format. because they are they are labeled in the beginning mm -hmm. and yep. maybe labeled with A, B, C or something. There was an email I sent you last year, which basically referenced a couple of examples from other parts of the country of similar town handbooks. Yes. Maybe just worth going back and just scanning to see whether there's actually. Yeah, no, that we, we gave them to the hopeful season. So, yeah, they asked me to provide, I think there was like four, four to five that I gave them. Okay. And they worked off of that. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's better than that. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Anything else on that? Anything nope. Okay. Kind of report. Kind of and I have one comment. Yeah, I, I'm pretty self-explanatory. The other two items there. Um, Public National Office, public restrooms, a bit of pushback, calling you the visitor center in particular. Oh, really? Yeah, I find that um, fascinating that there's pushback on that. Um, I think with the, the concern I'm hearing is where Brian is interested in placing it versus where I think it was publicly originally floated. No pun. <laughs> So, you so mean we're, we're explored two. Well, we've got two places. One uh, near the pier itself, uh, uh, which we, we were kind of publicly discussed originally. Yeah. And, and versus Reed, next to the to the hedge there, by the stage that location, and you have quicker access to the boat and dock. But um, I personally favor that the pier location. What I wondered um, is though, the pier location would that um, implicate the commercial fishing? Businesses yeah. in any way. I think I think there's room for both. So, um, so I think you know studies need to be done for both locations. Yeah, I think we've pursued right and we'll see which one rises. And then and then is there, is there one a third option? Is does. there is there actually a, a lease option of you know um, even where Salad Master was? Like there's there are actually spaces. Do we actually have to build them? Hmm. Could those have public restrooms? Well, so I mean, that's all. So, or or do you split them? Do you create a public restroom, smaller public restroom building, in Massachusetts Park, and right. actually yeah. use existing office space? Yeah. It may actually be cheaper. Yeah. If you, even if you sign a long-term lease. Like anything, there's many options potentially. They just need to. All, they need to be. And is concessions part of the? Idea, if it was a Masconoma or, or the or the pier, or like is, is there like a, a just there's so many activities in Masconoma from concerts to youth games. Like, is, have we ever thought of a, a, a concession? Oh, a concession stand. Oh. <clears throat> you don't like that? I don't. I don't. I don't. God bless you. Oh, I, 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 I just don't. Know anything. There's businesses in town. The there's businesses in town that yeah. rely on people coming into the harbor. And going. No, I'm, to thinking, buy. I'm thinking of things that are happening at Mass Conroe. Like, well, the, the concerts, people, yeah. concert goers very often arrive from the yeah, area of food away. establishments. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying, you know, we can have concerns about the businesses and the viability I, and the 
and keeping the customers for them. I completely agree with you. So so I that, love our local that would, business. That I, was my reaction. Yeah, I'm not sure that a dollar soda versus a 300-yard walk. I mean, there may be there may be untapped revenue sitting in the park for people who decide not to make the march. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's well, a lot of people also drain their own. What's that? It'll, it'll also, that would also generate untapped mess. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not hey, it should be part of the conversation. There's no, there's no, all options. I'm not talking about a 7-Eleven. talking. All options should be on the table. Do we have, I know some towns have concessions that are run by boosters. Right? Yeah, I don't Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, some some do it by business, some, some offer it to some non-profits, yeah. booster well, clubs. Yeah. When Hearts and Rec have their concerts, what a lot of the um, supporters of the individual concerts do, is then hand out, you know, like the Rotary did hot dogs the other night, and this one other group has treats. done something else, and so it's, it's a lot of those concerts now, that's kind of becoming the thing that supporters of the concerts want to do mm -hmm. to raise their profile at yeah. an event, too. That's kind of more where I was going. I wasn't talking about retail. But that's, uh, well, quite honestly, that's what it sounded like, so that's kind of Sorry. why I reacted the way I did. But I think a lot of that's already built in. In fact, built into the whole Parks and Rec concert series. There, it's happening now more every yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, every yeah, Tuesday. The park, yeah. At one point, we had a little but conversation. You could, you could build a stand. You could have a stand house with yeah. a lift up thing. Right. And yeah. Three or four years ago, we had a conversation on the Boy board Scouts level. Do remember, Eli, yeah. about yeah. even like the possibility of a farmer's market down there on a concert night. And it just never, there was a gentleman that came in from Essex. they're doing in Peabody and in yeah. Rivers. Yeah, so I, I, I think there's more that can happen down there, those study, concerts. I think, I think the study idea you suggested is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Parks and Rec might have some ideas. Anyway. So the last comment that I had out here was um, the SRO. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it would be appropriate to have Todd come in at your next meeting and have a more detailed discussion about that. And Just curious, general curiosity, what's the timeline for that type of implementation a year from now because it's a budgetary item? Or? No, they're saying, they're saying oh. this fall. <coughs> really? So there's a lot of issues that came up in my mind about that. Um, the district said that they would pay this broad range between 40 and 60 percent. Um, of the cost, um, but are they paying 40 to 60 percent of all the benefits for that officer? Um, you know. So I think they said 45 to 65 thousand. So that's all. Is that all? Is that all part and parcel of Todd's? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. But all I mean, I, but actually, <laughs> that's not, not the same that's, as that's not, even, all that's not even 50 percent. Uh, well, it's about 100 thousand all in. So, so is this um, a conversation that just our police interim police chief is bringing to us, or is this no, a collaboration? No, it's both. No, it's, it's both, both no chiefs, I, I understand that, but both is chiefs it and, and, would, the, and, the, and the school district would be in attendance at that meeting, oh. or that—that's what I'm getting at. Like, well, I was thinking of just having time, but yeah, we I, could. I don't know. It was new on the new on the notes, so. Yeah. Um, it's up, up to you what, what, what you would like. Well, I, I think. To Jeff's point, one of the first questions probably is, what's the cost? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, for everybody, right? right? right. Um, because it's budget impact. Yeah. If it's something well, that... Wasn't it 40 or 50? I thought, if it's something that they're looking to move forward so, with so now, the total cost budget is, impact. Including benefits is, is right around $100,000. What, what about the retirement benefit cost? Is that all paid by the employee, as the school district does? or? No, so that, so that's part of that hundred thousand. So you got is that Essex County Board? Right. right. Is, so um, had the school, I don't know what the term is, baked in some of this money in right. their budget that was just passed, or you don't know. But that's well, no. The indication is that they would find it in their existing budget. Okay. Thanks. We're still trying to figure out what to do with the balance of my salary since I retired. <laughs> so so I, a lot of these questions are questions that we would be asking on the 22nd, but I guess the, 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 the relevant bits are we, we've talked about whether or not somebody from the school district needs to be there. Um, if it's something that they plan to implement in the 
fall, or, or might implement in the fall. And we're going to have all these immediate budget questions, which <clears throat> maybe Todd can or can't answer, and they do want to do in the fall, then maybe we really should have somebody. Well, Greg and Todd would be answering the town's budget. Not the schools. The town, right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The town's budget questions, or where does it come from? But the school should probably be answering to where July, June, their August, portion comes from, because quite frankly, I think those are questions that sure. we as a board yeah. would get from people. But also, what um, are there any statistics on the efficacy of the SRO? Yeah, I mean, I think I, that's all information to Yeah, I think with. that's so. Yeah. All right, so somebody from the school district, and some the school should be here. And I'll tell yeah. Maury, because Maury will. Has FinCon heard about this one yet? No. Okay. You know, it's, it's funny, it's just kind of been bantered around yeah. for so and long it, over it the last two or three years, and then bing, <laughs> yeah. for September. It yeah. seems a little bit rushed so I, to have I, this happen. I just think we need to, mm -hmm. to Arthur's point earlier, Everything the T's have got to be crossed. It's, it's not Everything's got to be dotted. People need to understand the reasoning, the functioning, the process. The, yeah, I, I the don't money. think it's necessarily rushed the, because these conversations have been going on for a long time. I that was what I said. We've been hearing mm -hmm. two, three years around the yeah, you know, it's something that we're thinking about. It's something we're, we're talking, talking about, and now, and now, yeah. all of a sudden on July twenty second. The interim police chief has a proposal. Yeah, that, that, that's all. And I think it's something that will garner um, citizen questions and, mm -hmm. and, and curiosity. Because it's new. It's yeah. new and it's different. And it's a step that is big. Yes. Okay, anything else to support? Nope. We'd like to bring in Rob's description. I'm sorry. bringing a job description. Uh, I believe they have that. Oh, I believe so. Um, my only comment is next meeting, the 22nd, um, uh, we're going to do a continuation of that um, licensing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're not trying to do it earlier. Hmm? We're not trying to do that earlier. No, we'll okay. try and run that one. Uh, uh, Probably a well, We might do it a little bit later. But the thing is, is we're, we're going to run an executive. No, no, I know. I, I didn't know if we were going to try to do that before the 22nd of July. Uh, I wasn't planning on trying to do that before the 22nd of or July. Or before. No. Did we know from the applicant? What I was planning on doing was doing the executive. And they didn't object to that time. Right. Yeah. yeah. Could we do the executive session at 6? Yes, that was what I was getting at. It was my attempt to do the executive session around 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Is it half an hour enough? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Has the concern been raised? <clears throat> Has it been raised with the opposite? Yes. All right. Not, not directly. Okay. I'll, I'll, Indirect. follow, I'll, I'll follow up indirectly into that. <laughs> I'll be more blunt after yeah. you have forward to do the following mm -hmm. meeting. So I'll, I'll give them a told, I'll give them a heads up because he, legally he has to be told what it's about. That sort of thing. All right. So we're looking at six o'clock. Does six o'clock work for you that night versus right. six thirty? Okay. Okay. Can you change the meeting invite? What? Yeah. Yeah. Can we what? The invite. The oh yeah, invite. yeah, yeah. That's what I was. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Any, any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?